Turnaround. First, we need to make our models. For that, we want front and side view turnarounds for references. To make the turnaround, I referenced Crashoon's turnaround, and also found similar models to what I wanted on Models Resource, then imported them into Blender and screenshotted their front and side views. Modeling. I start off with a cube with mirror modifier, which reflects an object across its pivot point or given object, then build from the hip and up, continuously checking the front and side views. Extrude, scale, and extrude again until you form the most basic parts of the torso, making sure to not overcomplicate things just yet. For the legs and feet, I add a cylinder with mirror modifier. The feet are going to be covered by the shoes, so I just wing it, making them vaguely foot-like. To do so, I select the face at the end of the leg, duplicate it, rotate it, select both faces, and then use bridge edge loops. Then move it around so it forms a foot-like shape. For the shoes, I add a cube, add mirror modifier, then subdivide and move around vertices with proportional editing enabled. Proportional editing is this thing, and you can toggle it with the key O. Then I delete half of the shoe and add another mirror modifier so it mirrors over the foot, then also mirrors over the character, so I can do the least work possible. For shading, have all these objects set to shade smooth, so the normals are blended for the lighting, and they look smooth. Then for any edges I want to look sharper, I select them and mark them as sharp. I find this is much more reliable than using Auto Shade Smooth, which will calculate what's sharp based on angles between faces. Here, I add the human rig from Rigify and scale it to match the model to make sure my proportions are standard. I should have done this earlier, but I forgot. I'm also comparing it with this fat fuck of a seal model I made earlier. Then for her arms, I'm using Loop Tool to make the place where her arms are going to come out into a circle, then extrude. I edit the arms and position it to the Rigify rig. Loop cuts using Control R are your friend here. By the way, I actually do not recommend modeling your arms after the Rigify rig. Just have a straight elbow and A pose or T pose, because the bent elbows made it really difficult to make the hands later on, as you'll see right about now. For the hands, I extrude the end of the arm, retopologized to form four faces that could be extruded as fingers, then selected four faces, hit Alt E, then selected extrude individual faces, then scaled, then extruded again. Then for the thumb, do the same thing and position everything accordingly with proportional editing. Then for her off-shoulder sleeves, I created a cylinder, deleted the two end faces, then applied mirror and solidify modifier. I also applied this logic to her Mary Jane anklet straps. Solidify modifier gives an object depth. I deleted the additional useless faces, then shaped it with proportional editing. For her bow, believe it or not, the only tutorial for bows in Blender that I could find were from high school Roblox UGC content creators. After this discovery, I used it on my Roblox hating friend to try and convince him that Roblox can be a good thing. I'm not sure it worked. Anyways, the bow technique is basically have a curve object that follows another curve object. This is a useful technique because I use it for the hair and the necklace later. So create a curve object that is the shape of the cross section. Then create a curve object that follows the path of the bow or hair or necklace. Or whatever you want to make. In bevel object, select the cross section curve object. To change the scale of specific points on the curve, select them and hit Alt-S, not Control-S, because Control-S does something else, I forget what. To twist a selected point, hit Control-T, then you can create some fun twists in the path. You can also extrude and subdivide, like with meshes. For her ruffled skirt, I first make a mesh representing the ruffle. Then I create a curve representing the skirt edge by making sure on cage in the mirror modifier is enabled, holding alt while pressing one of the edges representing the edge loop I want, duplicating, separating, and then F3 convert to mesh. On the ruffle mesh, I add an array and curve modifier. I have the ruffle follow the skirt curve and mess around with the array settings until it looks right. Enable merge on the array modifier to have the start and end of the loop merge with each other. The skirt was not angled right, so then I went into the ruffle mesh in edit mode and rotated it. For her boobs, I wasn't really liking the shelf look and wanted a more pointy look. So I selected these two nip vertices, merged them, then selected all the boob faces and used poke faces to create a triangle fan. Then I add an edge loop so they're not just straight up Lara Croft pyramids by selecting the nip vertex, beveling with control B, and then again using poke faces. Then I make her head with a UV sphere, again moving around the vertices until they look right according to the turnaround reference, then end up with some vertices that are sticking out weirdly. To smooth those out, I use Loop Tools Relax, which softens vertices to follow along the trajectory of the other selected vertices. The higher the iteration, the more relaxed they'll be. For the nose, I just began cutting triangles with the knife tool and moving them around. Then I connect her body to her legs manually, just by selecting the vertices that should form faces, then pressing F to create a face. 
Keeping in mind the key to good topology is quads and sometimes triangles. Some people don't consider triangles as good topology, but since this is going into a game engine that will turn all the quads into tries anyways, I don't really care. For the lace on our socks, I select the edge loop for the end of the sock by holding alt, then selecting one of the edges that make up the loop, then duplicate, separate, then extrude the edge in the two different directions and scale. Next, I make the top layer of her ruffled skirt. It's low waisted, so it should seem like it's hanging off the hip area. So for that, first I duplicate the existing ruffled skirt mesh, then apply shrink wrap modifier to it. Just applying shrink wrap modifier will make all of it shrink to wrap around its target, but I only want the top part of the skirt to stick to her body, so I select the top edge loop of the skirt with alt, then assign it to a vertex group. In the shrink wrap modifier, I select this vertex group. Now only the selected vertices will stick to the target. For hair, I attempted making it out of a sphere mesh at first, but it looked really bad so I went the way everyone else does, using a hair curve cross section following another curve's path, just like with the ribbon. Again, using Alt S to make certain vertices smaller, and Control T to twist the vertices to the right angles. The hair is devised of like four huge sections, mirrored, and then smaller strands added as detail. For the hair, I use the draw tool a lot to get more natural curves. Just draw a line and the curve will create itself. For irises, I separated them into a separate object so they can move around later, then formed an inner white of the eyes mesh by adding a cube, flipping the normals, putting it inside the head, mirroring it, then deleting the outer face and moving the vertices onto the face mesh with snapping, face, face project enabled. This way when you move vertices, they will snap onto a nearby face. Lastly, but not leastly, for the joints, like the knees and elbows, I want nice bending with minimal quads, so I inset the quads representing the knee or elbow, create an edge loop where it'll bend, create a triangle on both sides pointing from the new edge loop towards the insetted quads, then dissolve the new edge loop. This results in bending like so. I forgot to do this on the fingers, so another reason why the fingers look so so jank. Don't look too closely at those hands. NOBODY LOOK! NOBODY LOOK! For the black haired character, I duplicated the white haired character's mesh, scaled it slightly for greater height, then changed the textures and hair. Then added a belt with a cylinder, added a hood for the hoodie with an extruded cube, and the necklace is like the ribbon, a curve using another curve as the bevel. For the wrinkles in her hoodie arms or pants, I use the knife tool or the loop cut tool to create edges where the wrinkles should be. Then I select certain parts of the wrinkles and mark them as sharp. UV mapping. I sort of UV map and texture as I go to make sure my topology is okay, because if you finish making a mesh then UV unwrap just to find out your topology sucks and you have to start over, it's kind of a bummer. Spoken from personal experience. Depending on the goal, there's like 5 main things I do for UV unwrapping. If I want it to perfectly reflect a 2D image, I use project from view to unwrap it based on the current view. If I want different 3D sections to be unwrapped in islands, I use seams by marking edges that should define the edges of the island right clicking and marking them as seams, then using smart UV project and adjusting the angle option. Optionally, afterwards I use UV squares extension to have them all aligned to a grid. If I want it to be unwrapped cylindrically like for the legs, then I use cylinder unwrap. Lastly, if there's a bunch of quads that should be the same color, I select them all, use magic UV extension snap to point, then scale them down and move them around in my texture. Texturing! My models use two textures. One 128 by 128 for the hair, and one 1024 by 1024 for everything else. I slap whatever is needed onto my texture, then move around things as things get busier like Tetris. I like hyper-realistic pixelated textures on low poly models, so I find a random picture of a clothing item and paste it onto my texture, disabling anti-aliasing and using nearest neighbor to scale to get that pixelated look. Side note, what's the consensus on crediting random fast fashion clothing pictures? Should I say that these images are from Alibaba and Jaded London? Anyways, after importing the image into Blender, set interpolation to closest for that crisp look. For the face, I wanted different 2D emotes for the eyes, mouth, and iris, so just drew different eyes, mouth, and irises. Materials. The base materials for each character is just the default with their image texture plugged into the color and alpha output. The eye, mouth, and iris parts got their own material that was a duplicate of the original material, just with a different underlying shader. Each eye, mouth, and iris shader had manually inputted nodes to manipulate the UV location offset for the texture, all controlled by one main value node, which will eventually be driven by a driver bone later during rigging. 
The exact shader is boring to explain and covered already by many tutorials, so copy the screenshot or check out LaCruzo's tutorial. I put subsurface scattering all the way to the max to get that translucent skin effect. And then done! Rigging body. For rigging the body, I used AccuRig's free rigging software. Imported my model, set the body's joint positions, set the hand's joint positions, and then we're done. Export. With the AccuRig's Blender plugin, select import character to import the rig. Position the eye bones to the middle of the iris, then move them back to the head however much you'd like. Weight paint the iris to each eye bone since this isn't done automatically. Then go back to the plugin and hit Rigify. This gives you Rigify IK controls to position your model. Rigging hair. For hair movement, I use the Wiggle 2 extension on GitHub. Add a bone, parent it to the head, position it on the hair, enable deform on the bone, name it as a hair bone. If you are going to symmetrize it, append it with .l or .r depending on what side it's on. Add it to its own bone collection labeled hair for better organization. To only see the bones in this collection, solo it by clicking the star icon. Extrude this bone however many times to form a hair strand. In object mode, select the rig, then select the mesh you want to weigh it to, having the mesh as the active selection. Go into weight paint mode, select all the hair bones, then select weights, assign automatic from bones. From there, go to pose mode, select all hair bones again with A, or selecting the bone collection then pressing select. Go to the animation tab from the Wiggle 2 extension and enable bone tail. Bone head just affects the position, but I want the hair bones to rotate too, hence bone tail. Then mess around with the settings until you get something you like. I liked to increase my quality to 10 for higher quality wiggles and set the stiffness from 500 to 1500 to make the bounces not too wild. Rigging the face. To control 2D expressions, create a bone, disable deform, enable axes to see the axes, and make sure the bone Z is pointing up by editing its role. Set a bone constraint to limit the location to only move on the local space Z axis, and then plug this bone into the 2D expression material value node by right clicking this node and selecting edit driver. Increase the multiplier of the value to decrease the distance needed for the driver bone to change the expression, and voila! Copy the driver bone to however many additional drivers you need. In my case, I had three things I wanted to change separately, and thus three driver bones. Eye, mouth, and iris. Animating. For my animation setup, I had three different wi animation windows open in addition to my 3D viewport, any one of which would reference the action editor, the timeline, the non-linear animation editor, the video sequencer, or the graph editor at any given time. I imported my audio into the sequencer. In the timeline, I set sync to sync to audio. Then in the action editor, I selected each rig and created a new action for each. I parented the two rigs to a microwave-like object that will eventually be intended to rotate, then created a new action for this object and started rotating it at different points in the timeline. I then right-clicked to every point I wanted to add a keyframe and selected insert keyframe. Later, I will use auto keying in order to not have to do this when we get into character movements. I drafted a quick storyboard of the main poses I wanted. Yeah, it sucks, but it gets the job done. Then I enabled auto keying in the timeline. Then I positioned to different beats in the audio using the sequencer and posed the characters to those main poses using the rigified IK bones. I prefer keying these main poses first before getting into the details because it makes the timeline less cluttered and confusing. Auto keying keys any new movements, so the keys were automatically added. Be careful with making any unwanted movements, however, because they will be recorded as well. Next, I add details like the fingers moving when she's waving, blinks, and foot movements so the rotation of the characters seem more natural. After everything is set, I separate the first half where the characters were doing different poses from the last half where the characters loop in an idle animation into two different actions. I push these actions onto new NLA tracks for each character, then set the loopable action to repeat until the end. I then edit the looping action directly from the NLA editor by right-clicking and selecting Start Tweaking Strip Action Full Stack. Lastly, once the NLA is finalized, I create a new action for each character, go into Wiggle 2 tab, increase pre-roll, check overwrite current action, then make sure I have the new action active and hit Bake Wiggle. This way my hair bones wiggles are baked in, and we can see those hairs move. And then, for real for real lastly, I created two different environments using ambient CG textured flooring and a principled volume cube for fog. 
then selected two different lighting scenarios from the Accurig Blender plugin scene tools dropdown because I'm lazy. Then rendered out two versions of the animation, one using one environment and one lighting scenario and the other using the others. Then also rendered the green screen version of both versions, so four videos in total. Post processing. In After Effects, I imported all four videos, removed the green screens, added a GIF of the blood effect from Silent Hill 3 to be masked by the green screened video, messed around with color correction effects, then added a stroke effect to the green screened videos for an outline effect, then added a glitch effect to the transition, a bit of chromatic aberration and glow, and done. This is probably the hardest thing I've done in a while. It was my first time modeling and raking a human, and as you can see, the results are not quite perfect, but they're pretty good. It took me 20 days, and I was just out here watching other people's tutorials, like, how do you do that in 22 hours? Anyways, rant over, thanks to my patrons, and enjoy this clip of my characters in my game.